Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to be looking at an X-Wing fighter by Bandai. Now I said at the start of the summer that not all the model kits that I reviewed on this channel this summer would be from round two and I kind of had the Bandai kits in mind but you know round two has had some pretty exciting products. The Katinga, the TIE Fighter, the Millennium Falcon that it kind of kept me busy and kind of kept these on the back burner. Now the Katinga, um, I'm a little stalled on that right now. So I looked around the room. I was like, I need to just work on something. And my kind of stack of Bandai kits caught my eye. Now, of course, uh, I'm in the U.S. And in the U.S., Round 2 has the license uh, to make Star Wars model kits. And they've done a fantastic job in the past couple of years, specifically on things like the new TIE Fighter and the Razor Crest, the Bad Batch, Havoc Marauder. Uh, but since about 2014, 2015, Bandai has had a license for Star Wars kits in the Pacific. They're imported, I believe, under the label Bluefin uh, here in the United States. And you can get them at Cult TV Man Hobby Shop, uh, which is a wonderful online retailer for Star Wars kits, Star Trek kits, and all sorts of different genre model kits. It's run by a wonderful guy named Steve, who is also helping out AllScaleTrek.com forums for a couple months, uh, kind of sponsoring a little bit and helping pay some of the server costs. Now, kind of being across the Pacific, Bandai aims for a little bit more different of demographics, and their model kits generally wonderful accuracy, they're generally more complicated, more complex, and they're usually smaller. Uh, like on the X-Wings, these are 172nd scale. Um, I, they did do a 148th, um, but in general, 172nd is kind of the biggest they do. Then they do much smaller things. So like their Razor Crest, much smaller than Round 2's. They have a Millennium Falcon that's actually 1/350th scale uh, that would fit in the palm of your hand. Uh, so... They generally go for smaller, a little bit more complicated. I'm going to show you some cool things they do in their model kits on this video as well. Now, the model I'm actually going to be building up is going to be one of my Resistance X-Wings from the newer movies. But I want to do a short introduction to Bandai kits. And I figured I would do that with this droid 2-pack. This is R2-D2 and R5-D4. And I have kind of a custom... Uh, R2 that I painted up. I, I do all my Star Wars models. I build them twice. I always do one in a green color. So here's my green R2 unit. All right. So let's take a look at this. Now, I know copyright laws and all that and where it's allowed to be released. Uh, if it does have a Bluefin label, that means it is licensed to be sold in the U.S. But here's my R2, D2, and R5, D4. Wonderful artwork. Now, what Bandai does so well is they do different colored sprues. Now, real simple droids, look at all the parts they do. That's what I mean when I say they do complicated and complex builds. So we have that silver plastic. We have our white plastic for the droids. We have black for the bases. We have decals and well, I'll have to check to see if those are decals or stickers. I think they've done both. Here's kind of the plastic for the other droid. And this, this is the unique part about Bandai kits. Let me be honest, the hobby is a bit bigger on the other side of the Pacific. So they have a little bit more uh, kind of means and bigger mass production going on. But this is what's unique about Bandai kits. So they do color injection molding and they're actually able to do different color parts on the same sprue. So when we look at like these droids, uh, we get gold pieces, we get red pieces, we get blue pieces, we get kind of smoke transparent pieces. Um, then on other sprues, we have black and we have white. And all of these are laid out a little bit like a puzzle. So if we look here, you can see this tiny little surface. That is part of his leg. You get different colors for the wires on his leg. Yeah, You can see when you put together R2-D2's head, 
you have these little blue pieces that are done in blue that you fit onto the silver. And it really does fit together like a puzzle. So on my custom piece, if we take a look at this droid, you can see I've done mine in green, but there's also some silver parts, some black parts, uh, a silver rod there. And those parts that are different colors are done as different pieces. So here's the white part of R2-D2's leg. The blue part gets laid into it. Uh, the little wires around his foot are already done in gold. Kind of that hydraulic pipe is already done in gold. You can see, so you get the blue part, you set it in the white part, you lay a silver part within that. So going back to my built one, everything you see here that's green is one part. I did not have to paint these little silver rivets a different color. That's a silver part that you put underneath and it pokes up through the green. Uh, this silver part you lay in separately. And then this was a separate part. This was a separate part. Here, this part was molded in one color. This part's molded in another. So you get really complicated color schemes all done with different parts. You can see up on top of the head, all of these green panels are separate panels that come off a different sprue. So a lot of these kits really are made to be put together in a very complicated way and it's going to leave the right color shining through and you'll have a wonderfully detailed model without having to have painted anything. So different color molded pieces on a single sprue, complicated designs, um, more intricate designs, they're overall smaller models and that's just a little difference between the way things are done in different parts of the world. The other thing that is done differently is what paints you can use. In America, in Europe, uh, we do more enamels, we do more oil-based paints. In across the Pacific, in Asia, and Japan, they do less enamels, they do um, more acrylics, which are easier in small spaces, they're a little bit more friendly, they're a little more forgiving. And Bandai Plastic, whether or not it's the really intricate molding, the different colors on the same sprue, uh, their plastic does not react well to oil-based paints, specifically oil-based thinners, washes, uh, things like that can really damage Bandai plastic. If you watched my video on the Millennium Falcon where I'm putting a wash over and I'm doing huge brush strokes with thinner, um, really covering the entire model with thinner to kind of brush that wash all over the place, that's something you could never do on a Bandai because large amounts of thinner like that will really kind of damage uh, the plastic. And I'm not going to go into it too much here, but it is a real thing. You could check it out all over the place online about what oil thinners do to Bandai plastic. Uh, it's, it's just not meant to be used with oil paints and oil-based thinners. Now, what kind of excited me this week was working on a resistance-style X-Wing. And I have two model kits that came out along with The Rise of Skywalker, the most recent Star Wars movie. In that film, they had kind of an orange-based one and a green-based one. And of course, the green one catches my eye because, as I say, I always build two and I always make a Star Wars uh, model kit green. Green A-Wing, green Jedi Starfighter. And these were kind of different paint schemes based upon the blue X-Wings that were from The Force Awakens. I love The Force Awakens. I I, I'm, like I said in the video, I'm the kind of guy who likes all the Star Wars movies, no matter what. That's just kind of the way I am. I like things. Um, I like the X-Wings. I love it when they come across that lake and you see them for the first time in The Force Awakens. I love that shot. So I, I was kind of feeling bad that... I wasn't going to be able to make a blue resistance X-Wing. They weren't really in stock when I was picking these up. All right, so, so we know what Bandai is going to do here. We know that they're going to have different color sprues. They'll have a big orange sprue, a white sprue, a silver sprue, and the pieces are going to fit together like a puzzle. So you'll have an orange piece that lays within a white piece to give us this nice sharp line, and you don't have to paint it. We know back here on the engines, you'll have kind of a silver piece that's going to fit in the orange piece. And I, I was trying to think what I was going to do since I wanted a blue one. I was probably going to build it all, primer it all, and try and do a blue 
paint job. But I, I had a hope in the back of my head, and that goes back to this guy. I bought this droid as a set that had, I, I think it's more an Imperial R2, where it has kind of the hexagonal head. And when I opened it up, it had duplicate parts to let me make it as a round-headed droid. I had a little bit of a hope in my heart when I picked this up and I opened it up. And sure enough, we have our base. And then I have all of these white and blue parts. I have white parts. I, I knew I'd have white parts. I've got my silver parts. I've got my white wings. And then I have my orange parts. And what band I did is they started with our white and blue X-Wing. And they just did an extra sprue that you would need to change it to the orange one. And these are duplicate parts. So there you can see our fuselage for the white and blue version. And then you can see the fuselage that they remade that has to be a little bit different because it's got different orange parts fitting into it. Here are our orange parts of the wings. So you can see we've got one, two, three, four. So we've got both halves of those engines. And then I go to that white sprue and I've got those parts repeated to match up with the blue parts. So it turns out when they made the orange version of the kit, they gave you just two extra sprues that are what you need uh, to make the orange version of the kit. You can see here's that sharp triangular shape uh, that fits in against that fuselage. Um, but they continue to include all the original parts uh, for the blue version of the kit. Now, I did actually have to look up the instructions for the blue version of the kit. Uh, because there are, there's a few things left off. So here we can see uh, there are some parts that they gated off and did not make on this kit here and here. And at some point they lost the right to make a standing figure. Um, I think that's a Hasbro thing. I think Hasbro says you can't have action figures. Uh, the seated pilot in the cockpit is allowed to be there since he's part of the model, but they're no longer allowed to have what Hasbro would call an action figure to stand beside the model. So that guy got flattened at some point. But all we're missing are whatever was on the tree here and here. So I, I pulled out a PDF of the instructions and I double checked. Uh, this silver sprue matches everything on the instructions. Uh, the stand is now done in black instead of kind of the previous color. All right, my white sprue matches. All right, and it looks like what I'm missing here is BB-8 was on the original one, so the droid there, so missing a droid. And for the parts down here, I was able to identify those, those parts that were originally done in white, when they were taken off of that white sprue, they were put onto this sprue and done in silver. And I can absolutely deal with those parts being silver on this build instead of white. But even though I bought the orange version of the X-Wing, I'm gonna be able to build this as the blue and white one. It's gonna be a little bit more complicated on the instructions, but I have all the parts to build the first version of this ship. I didn't actually look to see what droid I would have here. Um, Poe would not have BB-8 at this point. Um, BB-8 is with Ray. So did we get a droid added in here? I think he has more of just an R2 unit, right? Okay. Yep, there's an R2 body. So we should have an R2 head on this sprue someplace. Yep, there we go. Okay, so instead of a BB-8, we just have an R2 unit. All right, so now we have my preferred color scheme. We've got the green X-Wing. And let's see if they gave us both versions here too. Okay, let me open this one up. Once again, blue fin in the US, so no standing pilot. Although I think maybe they stopped the standing figure in Japan as well. All right, let's take a look. All right, so we have 
the same silver sprue we did before with those parts moved off the white sprue. This is that additional white sprue that was made when they did the orange one. So it looks like the green and the orange are just going to be the same thing, just swapped. There's our R2 droid and head that we just looked at. All right, exactly the same thing. All the original parts to make the blue and white version of the kit. No BB-8 droid and those parts that were originally done in white moved to the silver sprue. So once again, if you get the green version, you could still build it as the blue and white version. There is our green color, a little bit more olive than I prefer. Um, yep, I prefer just a little bit more of an emerald green for my Star Wars Green Squadron. But very nice, very nice detail. See, they are snap kits, so you can see those round holes just have a little bit of an octagon to them, so they'll hold together really tightly. And of course, our original white sprue. You know, the box doesn't have an R2 with the round head. It has a, what is it, an, R, an R5 head? Let's see. Let's get a close-up look at this. Yeah, that's more of a bucket head. Okay, that's interesting. Let, let me take a look at that. All right, Poe. Yeah, okay, so on Poe's, you do get the round head, and on the green resistance one, you get a little bit of the bucket head. Other than that, yeah, everything else is exactly the same. And that's just kind of some of the silly things. Like, if you're going to duplicate entire sprues, uh, why on one did they close off the gate to take away the round head and not... Just leave it there. But clearly planned because here's where this one's labeled E1 on this kit and E2 on this kit. Yeah, just some interesting choices there. Okay, so I got to do bucket head with my green and my round R2 with that one. What I'm going to end off here as this video is kind of to introduce you to a little bit of just Bandai kits. Um, I'm going to pull out my 70 second scale y-wing which of course i've done in green and i'm just gonna let you know all of these extra little pipes once again these are intricate complex models all these little pipes are on separate sprues so what i did when i built this is i just took a sprue of the hoses and i painted them all copper with my airbrush i did some other ones all in silver so if you see a copper pipe here that was not painted on the model that was painted on the sprue and then it makes it very easy to assemble it and get those colors without having to do detailed masking. Like a lot of Y-Wings, they just give you this part in half. Here they give you the nose cone. This part that's a different color is on a different sprue and molded in color. I, I repainted it to be green instead of yellow. And then it goes on to have more white parts. So... It fits together very cleanly, very sharp lines. Even this piece here that I've done in green, that is molded in yellow on the kit and it fits in on top of that kind of cockpit hull. So very intricate, very complicated, um, very fun builds. And the Y-Wing had just a ton of different hoses. So very cool builds. So I think the next video I'm going to do is going to be a build video for this green X-Wing. Um, I think I'm going to do the same thing I did for the R2 unit and the Y-Wing. I'm going to take this entire sprue. I'm going to use my airbrush. I'm going to spray it down with my preferred shade of green. And then I'll do white paint on the white parts. I'll do my silver on the silver pieces um, because if, if you leave it unpainted it could yellow in a few years um, plus I it just looks it looks better painted it looks more like plastic unpainted so I'm gonna airbrush this white airbrush this green airbrush the silver silver and then I'm going to have all that painting done uh, before I assemble it and kind of show you how Bandai makes all those parts fit together uh, to give you a cool, intricate model with complicated assembly and very easy painting. 
So of course, a big thank you to all of you for following the channel and sticking with me on these videos, especially on the very few that I do big rants on. Uh, thank you for following the builds. Thank you to Cult TV Man Hobby Shop for sponsoring the AllScaleTrek.com forums. And I'll be back with this Bandai build pretty soon.